Good morning, everybody. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your you order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set the lamb that was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the Lamb who was slain, worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me All right, well, good morning, Vision Church. So happy you're with us today. Man, I'm just excited about Caleb being his third message uh, a little bit in a little bit, and just th so thankful for him filling in and doing that. And I'm just th so thankful for you all showing up and just leaning in with uh, the series that he's brought. Thankful for Brandon once again, just uh, filling in, doing a great job. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you, God, that you've given us this church. 
And God, that you've put these people here in this place, that none of us are here by accident, but God, your plan, your will, just, just, just uniting, knitting together this body, God, that you've brought these people together for a reason. And God, that every single person sitting in this place today is not here by accident, that you have something for them today. You want to speak to them through your word. God, every time we open your word, there's something to gain from it. There's something to learn. There's something to be convicted of. And so, God, I just ask that your spirit would move in this place. And God, if there's any of us that maybe came into this place with walls up, maybe we feel a little distant from you, God. I pray that as we worship, that you would soften our hearts. That those walls would come down and that we would come running to you like children run to their father. God, that we would jump into your arms and we would see that you love us, that there is grace and mercy for us. No matter what we've done, how far we've ran, God, that you, you love us. You sent your son for us. And so, God, as we worship, we give you all the glory. This is all for you. It's not just singing, about singing catchy songs. It is about your glory and singing truths, biblical truths, God, that is all pointing to you. And so, God, that's what we want to do. So, God, we worship you. We direct our gaze to you. We direct our hearts to you now. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, 
Now the curse of sin has no hold on me Whom the Son set free Oh, is free indeed Oh, that blood did cross my salvation stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're good good father to you are, to you are, to you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers for. But I know we're all searching for answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved. I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, who you are, who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You are perfect in all. Of your ways, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To love, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect. 
for who you are. We thank you for letting us be your children, your family, for being a provider when we are poor, for being the light when we're in the dark. We ask that you prepare our hearts to hear from you this morning. And we pray that when you speak, we will listen. And when you move, we will follow. In Jesus' name, amen. Good, there we go. Now we're cooking with Crisco. Good morning, everyone. How y'all doing this morning? One of y'all is doing good. All right. 
All right. Well, if you would, go ahead and let's get our Bibles out, and we're going to conclude this series uh, before I get too far. Um, I just want to thank Pastor Nathan for the opportunity to, uh, to speak for you guys and fill in for the last few weeks. I also want to say thank you for hanging out and uh, being supportive. Uh, I was talking to someone earlier, like uh, I know that uh, I've been in classes where the cool teacher was out and the substitute was in and I know how I treated the substitute <laughs> because everyone wanted the cool teacher back. Uh, but thank you so much for uh, your support and your uh, just your input and and being uh, being right here with me uh, the past few weeks. Thank you, Pastor Nathan. The cool teacher will be back next week. How many are excited for Pastor Nathan to be back next week and uh, getting back into the series that we took a pause from? So uh, we're going to conclude our series blocked by perspective. Um, so if you have your Bibles, we're going to start out with our anchor verse in uh, Hebrews chapter twelve. And then we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 18. Uh, for all of those that are watching online this morning, welcome. We're glad that you have joined us. Give us a thumbs up or a heart emoji or something like that. Let us know you're here. If you're a guest here this morning, we are glad that you are here as well. Uh, stop by at the end of service. We have a... Uh, a connections desk there stop by we have uh just some greetings to you get to know you and all that stuff so uh we are super super glad that you are here so first uh our anchor verse hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 which is where we will get a lot of why i chose this verse for all three weeks of this series it's all going to make sense with this last uh last sermon today Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Verse 2. We do this. By keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Now, if we could go to 1 Samuel chapter 18, starting out at verse 5. I'll give you a second to get over there. If you don't have a Bible today, you can certainly follow along on the screens behind me, or there are some throughout um, underneath the chairs there if you want to grab one of those. 1 Samuel chapter 18, starting out at verse 5. Whatever Saul asked David to do, David did it successfully. So Saul made him a commander over the men of war, an appointment that was welcomed by the people and Saul's officers alike. When the victorious Israelite army was returning home after David had killed the Philistine, Women from all the towns of Israel came to meet King Saul. They sang and danced for joy with tambourines and cymbals. This was their song. song Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. This made Saul very angry. What's this, he said. They credit David with ten thousands, and me with only thousands. Next, they'll be making him their king. I want you to pay very close attention to verse 9. If you highlight your Bible or whatever, you can do this verse. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. If we would just go before the Lord in prayer real quick as we go into this service today. Lord Jesus, once again, we are thankful that we are able to come together in your house this morning to experience your blessings, your creation, and above all, God, to experience your presence. Lord, because without your presence here today, we're just here for another gathering. 
But Lord, we have come here for one purpose, and that pur purpose is to magnify you and to hear from you and to open up your word and gain those truths and those confirmations that are clearly written in your word. So let us speak today your voice and let us hear you and respond. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Um, so our anchor verse from Hebrews tells us that we are essentially in a race that has been set before us. But in order to complete it and to be successful, we have to keep our eyes on who? Jesus. In 1 Samuel, it tells us that Saul keeps a jealous eye on David. In any race, it is very difficult to run if your eyes are constantly fixed on the lanes next to you. For this conclusion of this series, I want to talk about the perspective of comparison. So we are about to approach the holiday season. Um, I don't know if any of you have, uh, I'm sure, have set up your fall stuff. In my house, we skipped fall. And you know what that means. It is Christmas in my house. We were on fall break last week, and uh, we had the idea, we talked originally about setting Christmas stuff up, you know, around mid-November-ish. But my wife had other plans. I don't know if you gentlemen have ever heard this. If you love me, you'll do this. Well, I love my wife, and we put up the Christmas stuff. But it is, it is fun. Uh, it, it just it makes me happy. I just started listening to Christmas music in October, so it, you know, it wasn't a huge big deal. I just love the season and all that stuff. But Christmas time is coming, and with that comes a new year. 2025 is about to approach, and all of us come December 25 through 30th, we start thinking about that new year. And the goals we're going to have, right? New Year's resolutions. How many of all ever ordered the, uttered these words? I'm going to get fit next year. Anybody? I'm the only one. Okay, all right, we got some people like, I'm going to start exercising, and I'm going to start eating right. And, and it's really, really, you got that confidence in you. Well, we decided a few years ago that we were going to get fit and start exercising. And with that came a gym membership. So we went, we got the membership, we signed up for a whole year. That was back when you had to do a whole year and there was none of this month to month and no Planet Fitness where it was like a nickel to go work out or something like that. Like you had to like, you had to commit for a whole year, like $70 a month or something stupid like that back in the, you know, this has been a few years ago. So we get signed up, and I get that little, the most expensive keychain that I will ever own, and that's that key fob that gets you in the door. And I remember we were going to get up in early in the mornings or go in the evenings, and we were going to be committed, and we went out, and we got all the appropriate gear, or at least I did. I got me some new shoes, which that doesn't say anything because I love shoes. That was just, you know, a reason to buy another pair. But I got like the workout shorts and I got like those tight compression shirts and I realized nobody should wear tight compression shirts. <laughs> and uh, so I looked good, y'all, except for that shirt. I looked okay. I remember I went to the gym and I was working out, and I, and I didn't know a whole lot about the machines or anything like that. I was just like, I found one, I saw one, I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'll try this one out, and I get going on it, and I'm doing all the things, and I'm breaking a sweat, and I get done with it, and then someone comes to me and says, hey, you know that's the towel rack, you don't, you don't do anything on that one. <laughs> so, so I said, maybe I should go with something more my speed. And there's like dumbbells, like I can do dumbbells, that's pretty simple. All you gotta do is just kind of lift those and curl those and, and I go and I'm thinking like, well, you know, I'm, I'm an adult, I could probably handle like 45 pounds, 
So I start lifting. I'm like, no, nope, not 45. So I go down here to the 15s. I get those. I can lift those. And I, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm looking in the mirror. I'm going at it. And then all of a sudden, start hearing this noise from a distance. It's just like, rah, and just loud, just obnoxious, like pumping it up. And I turn, and there's this dude, and he's got shorts on, and he's got this ripped T-shirt. You know, the sleeves are like ripped down to his, you know, and he and he just got a pair of Chuck Taylors on. And it looks nothing like I do, and that dude's just going to town on it. And I'm just like, maybe dumbbells isn't my thing either. But I knew there was another important thing that you had to do in order to get fit and to lose weight, and that was running, the treadmill. Those are pretty simple. So I get on the treadmill, and I don't know if you all have ever been to a gym or not, but when you get on a treadmill, there's a TV in front of you. And most of the time, when you're on a treadmill and you're watching those TVs, the channel that is on is the Food Network. <laughs> like, this does not make any sense at all. So I'm like doing my jog and everything like that. And all I could think about is, I'm going to eat that when I get home. Like, like, I don't understand that dynamic. So I'm going at it. I'm running. I'm just doing a nice, even jog. And then I see this older lady off in the corner who is doing her thing a lot better than I am. So unbeknownst to her, me and her are in a competition and a race. So the moment she sped up, oh, I sped up. I'm going at it. When she went on an incline, you better believe I was going an incline because this lady wasn't going to outdo me. So she's doing all these changes and everything. And I got wore out probably after a minute of doing this. So I'm like, okay, this was a good first day. I need to go home. That next morning goes on, the alarm goes off at 5 a.m. And I'd be like, I'm not going to work out every day. <laughs> got to let, gotta let the muscles relax a little bit. And I never went back after that. So it just, it wasn't a thing. It wasn't my thing. So clearly we know comparison at the gym is not a smart thing to do. But what is an even bigger problem is comparison in life. So today, the first point that I want to talk to you this morning is simply stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. When it comes to success in life, the blessings from God, and all of these things, we will begin to assess others of where their progress is in their life. How did they get that? How did they do that? What did they do to uh, attain all these things? And we begin to assess their lives and we compare it to ours and we wonder, where is it in my life that I miss out on getting to what they got? I am one of those people that will go down a rabbit hole on YouTube and uh, I really enjoy those videos with like the abandoned mansions and stuff like that. That's one of my favorite things to watch and, and those explor uh, explorations. And then I'll get into like the car stuff. Uh, and it'll, they'll do like these interviews with celebrities and go to their, their garages and see all the cars that they've got. And, uh, you know, they've got old school chargers and 57 Chevys and Camaros and all these things. And, uh, and then I'll watch the ones, well, they'll go to this deserted barn and they'll find like an old charger Camaro and be like, you know, I'm going to take this and I'm going to fix it up and it's going to be awesome. And I watch those shows and I was like, you know what, I'm going to try that. So I went to this place and I found the car, but the manager of the dealership got real mad at me for trying to put dust on the showroom car. And they're like, you got to pay for that. And they asked me to leave. But anyways, we assess others' success. And then we will begin to model their race. We start to model their pace, and then we start to model their call and their purpose in life. 
ladies and gentlemen, we can exhort all this time and the energy to model someone else's race. Meanwhile, over here in this lane where we are supposed to be, we never fully step into the pace and the race that God has called for us. All because we are trying to model and compare ourselves with someone else's purpose and we couldn't stay in our lane. Comparison is a destroyer to your destiny. It is the enemy's weapon of mass distraction and ultimately a weapon of mass destruction. Comparison will constantly cloud the clarity of God's call on your life. I want to confirm you today that there is a call on your life. There is a purpose to your life. There is a plan for your life. And the great thing about this call is that God has already equipped you with all the necessary tools to complete it. The Bible tells us that he that began a good work in you is able to complete it. This path, this journey that you are on, your main focus is simply, one, to keep your eyes on Jesus and to complete and finish your race. Stay in your lane. Point two as we come across this next one is we are God's workmanship. We are God's workmanship. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, For we are God's masterpiece. Ladies and gentlemen, you are God's masterpiece. I want to remind you of that, that in those days and in those moments where we are our biggest critic, well, if I only look like this, if I only had this talent, if I only had this ability, if I only had this hair, if my hair wasn't falling out, if my nose looked like that, in those moments of weaknesses where we are our biggest uh, critic, we have to remember we are God's masterpiece. Continue on. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago the bible tells us that he created good things for us to do when you were developing eyelids god had a call and a purpose on your life and he was already equipping you to fulfill it when you were in your mother's womb he looked down and said i have a plan a design, and a purpose for them to do good things. We are God's masterpiece. We are his workmanship. If we could sum up Ephesians 2.10, 1 Samuel 18, and our anchor verse from Hebrews, it would all scream out one message. There is one who orchestrates the success in our lives, and in order to obtain those, we have to simply keep our eyes on Jesus. I want to give some context about Saul this morning. The Bible describes Saul as a good-looking dude. He came from a wealthy family. He had money. All the single ladies would be like, hey, Saul, you know, like, that's my kind of dude. Not me. Ladies. That's the ladies type. Okay. So, he was appointed by God to be king. He was appointed by God to be king. And the only way to be appointed by God is to have favor from God. It wasn't an accident that Saul was in the position that he was in. Saul was blessed so much so, pay attention to this, that the blessing was taking the attention away from the blesser. Allow me to elaborate this. Oftentimes, we will pray for the blessings from God, and there's nothing wrong with that. We receive those blessings, 
and then we use it for the unintended purpose. The best way I can describe that is the prodigal son. The prodigal son, a lot, you know, we've, we've heard the story in Sunday school. I'm sure you've heard sermons about the prodigal son. And uh, even if you're are new to this church thing, you, you probably have a, a, a slight, you know, recall of what the prodigal son is. But the prodigal son, he, he goes to his father and he says, I'm, I'm tired of doing this. And we will, uh, he went and asked his dad, you know, can, can I have my inheritance? I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to live anymore, uh, live here anymore. I want to go out. I want to do my own thing. And the, the father gives the son the inheritance. The story goes on is that he went out and the Bible describes it as he did riotous living. He squandered all his money away. He gave it to people. He spent it on bad things. And then the Bible tells us that he ends up basically eating pig slop. So what can we take about this? The father, the prodigal son, is a par parallel or a parable. The father being Jesus gave the blessings to the son. And the son used the blessing for an its unintended purpose. Sometimes the blessings can be so bright that it blinds us from the one who blessed it with us, and then we don't use it for the purpose that God gave it to us. Saul began to use his blessing in the wrong way. While Saul began to fall more in love with his position and title, there was a man named David that was in love with God. Can you imagine if, uh, or let me, sorry, I, I, I skipped over. David had this life-changing moment that catapulted his destiny. He had a meeting with a giant. The Bible tells us that he was the only one willing to go out on the battlefield with only a sling and a stone, and he took the giant down. Could you imagine if this had happened in our culture today? Some dude goes out on a battlefield with only a sling and a stone, and he takes down the most decorated enemy of all. Man, he would be trending on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. I'm sure like Nike would be like, hey, we want to give you a shoe, the Nike Air Davids, you know. Like I would buy those. I would wear those. But David is living out Ephesians 2. He is doing the things that God created him to do. And then when we read Samuel 18, David is at a high peak in his life of accomplishments. And those accomplishments have reached the ears of a jealous king. He hears those songs. Saul has killed his thousands. And David, his ten thousands. It's frustrating. It's annoying. And this is where Saul's perspective changed. His focus went away from God, and his jealous eye switched to David. 1 Samuel 18 and 9, and Saul kept a jealous eye on David. So we come to point three once again, just like last week. This is where I want to spend a lot of the time in this sermon today. Point three is... We have to have the right perspective of the race. 1 Corinthians 9 and 23 says it like this. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an internal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. 
I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should do. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. So why do we run the race? Verse 24 of what we just read says, to win. Why do we run this race? Why are we in this life? Why are we trying to compete? It's to win. But here's the thing, and I want you to pay close attention to this. Winning is not beating out the other runners. Winning is not trying to run their race. And winning is not necessarily about your speed. The prize that First Corinthians Corinthian is talking about is a spiritual prize. Winning is not about being more like the person that's in the lanes next to you. Winning is about being more like Jesus. Winning is not about your speed. It is not about how fast you can finish it. What Jesus requires of you is to constantly keep moving. Not backward, not standing still, but moving forward. You may be in this race today, ladies and gentlemen, and life's inconveniences have come and that happens, but the important thing is, are you still moving? Are you still running? Is your eyes focused on the one who has called you to run this race? It is not how fast you run, but my question is, ladies and gentlemen, are you farther along today than where you were yesterday? Why do we run this race? To win. To win. The race is unique to you. It has been marked out especially for you. Like the orange cones that have been placed on the track that indicate the path of a long distance race, God has marked out a race distinctive for you. While the destination is the same for everyone, which is ultimately a life like Jesus, the journey that gets us there is different for everyone. Don't compare your track to someone else's. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. I'm going to close out today's sermon in a very different way. This is where we get introduced to ultimately why this is here. So our anchor verse that we have been saying together for the last three weeks, last two weeks, we've started out each sermon with it, we've closed it out with each sermon with it, and today I want to do the very same thing, except I want to read it in its entirety. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to live the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. That's where I want to take a, take a pause. Every single one of these that we have wrote out the past two weeks is that weight that so easily trips us up. The sin, the weight that so easily slows us down and keeps us from wanting to pursue God's call and purpose that he has on our life. As we continue on, it says, And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We have to pace ourselves. We have to strengthen ourselves. How do we do that? It starts by getting into his word. Getting into those moments of quiet time with the Lord. Getting into his presence because it is only in his presence that our weaknesses are made strong. 
And how do we do it? We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Ladies and gentlemen, this is represented as the stumbling block. The thing that easily trips us up. Throughout this series, we have wrote things that have tripped us up or things that have blocked us from our purpose and the, the, the calling that God has for our lives. So I want to go ahead and want, I want to write one more last thing on here. Kind of sloppy, but that's all right. Perspective. What this whole series has been about is perspective. One perspective can tell us that we are not qualified. One perspective can keep us in the boat. One perspective can tell us that the life that I'm living in order to get to the promise was better than what I'm having to go through to get to the promise. Perspective is everything. The whole series has pointed to two things. Perspective and who our focus needs to be on. We have looked at this the whole week as the stumbling block. We have looked at this whole week of writing things down that we struggle with and the things that have kept us from getting to where we need to go, the, the things that have, have easily tripped us up. We've looked at this as the stumbling block. But ladies and gentlemen, if we change our perspective and we put our focus on the one that we need to focus on and his name is Jesus, then this isn't a stumbling block that trips, trips us up and causes us to fall. But we can focus on some of the promises that God has written in his word that changes this into a stepping stone. I want to call your attention to some promises that God has in his word. In James chapter 1, verse 2 through 3, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Jeremiah 29 and 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not evil, and to give you a future and hope. Isaiah 41 and 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. John 14 and 27, Peace I leave with you, and peace I give to you. Not as the world gives to you I give, but let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Hebrews 13 and 5, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, for, for you said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In 1 Peter 5 and 10, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, 
who has called you into this internal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your straight paths. As we stand across this building this morning, once again, ladies and gentlemen, perspective and the right focus changes this from the stumbling block to the thing that can elevate you and to take you into higher heights with the one who called you. So as we close out this service today and if we go ahead and get our prayer teams up here, please do not miss out on this opportunity this morning to change your focus, to change your perspective. And don't allow life's inconveniences to trip you up and to constantly look in the lane beside you and, and try to keep up with that pace and try to keep up with them. But stay in your lane and let Jesus guide and direct you to the steps that he wants you to take. Let's pray, Lord Jesus. Once again, we are thankful for your word this morning and what you have spoken to us. So I pray, Lord, that there was a tender heart this morning that received your word. But God, above that, I hope that they respond to your word this morning. If there is a need in this house, no matter what it is, I pray today that it be met with your love, with your grace, with your forgiveness, with your healing hand. And I pray today, this morning, if there is not a person that has not experienced your salvation, God, let them experience it today. Help us to be bold this week. Help us to stay in our lane this week. Help us to take chances and step out on those opportunities, Lord, to get out of the boat. Help us to realize that the promises that you have for us are created for us and the path to get there. You have already designed that you are just waiting for us to arrive. So Lord, let us keep moving forward to the promises and the purpose and the calling that you have for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Father, we thank you that you are perfect. Now that you are good and you are kind and you are mighty. And God, I just pray today that you'd help us to believe these truths. God, I pray that the word that was spoken today would sit with us, would stir us. And we would not leave here people that just attended a service or attended church. We leave here the people that have grown closer to you, drawn closer to you. God, I pray for the people that might be like myself, that struggle with comparison. that have grown stagnant because of their eyes have been set on others. And God, I just pray that you'd help us to set our eyes on you. That you would be our aim and you would be our goal and you would be the prize for us. And despite how if life is good or it's bad, that we would just run to you. God, I pray that you'd help this church to surround one another in the races that we are running, to help us keep going, to help give each other that endurance to keep running to Jesus, that we would point one another to Jesus. God, 
God, let your spirit continue to move as we finish this service and go about our day. I want your spirit to continue moving in our lives, in our families. We love you, God. We thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, church. Well, man, it's good to be in the house of the Lord with you all gathering together as a church family. We have a couple announcements, and then I'm going to let Tammy Alvis share about Operation Christmas Child. I cannot believe that, but we are nearing, uh, we're, we're there. We're it's time to start packing them, and she'll share that with you, and so we're excited about that. But So next Sunday is the church bonfire. Please come to this. If you're able to, join us to be at Ron and Terry Pig's house. We can get you the address. Bring a chair. Uh, just come ready just to just have community with one another. Once again, I, I say this, but these are the events that help knit us together as a church. It's no longer people that you just wave at when you come in church or you see a cross sitting from you, but they're people you sit by and, and do life with and talk to and ask about their family, whatever that is. Love this, and, and that's awesome. And then in a couple weeks from now, we'll have Friendsgiving. going to be at Southern Homestead Event Center. That's Mike and Taylor Hertz Event Center. Uh, it's like our Thanksgiving dinner, but we call it Friendsgiving because we're friends, and we want you to invite your friends. And so come. Um, I'm sure Karen or somebody will be uh, getting in touch with you about bringing things or whatever we need, and so keep your ears out for that. All right, now I'm just going to hand it over to Tammy, and she's going to share a little bit about Operation Christmas Child. Good morning. If you're new or fairly new and you don't know me, my name is Tammy Alvis, and uh, Operation Christmas Child is part of Samaritan's Purse. I'm sure you've probably heard of Samaritan's Purse if you haven't heard of Operation Christmas Child. And um, Operation Christmas Child through Samaritan's Purse sends gift-filled boxes to children in need overseas, and when they do that, they also send the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Uh, if you would like to find out more about that, you could go online to SamaritansPurse.org or, or just Google Operation Christmas Child. Uh, there'll be testimonies and different stuff too. I, um, I made up one of my boxes, and I'm gonna leave it out on the table, feel free to look through it to see how things, now this is not perfect, but this is how I do it. So uh, if you wanna get an idea, if you've never heard of this before and you're clueless, uh, if you got any questions, ask me. We need the boxes turned back into the church by Sunday, uh, November 17th. Your family can take as many boxes as you want to fill. I will, I'll give you a hint, Dollar Tree is a fantastic place to get stuff and uh, put stuff in. Uh, one thing I did want to share is ivory soap. Um, if you choose to put uh, like hand towels or uh, wash rags in there and soap to send to the children because um, the needs cover everything, they ask that you send ivory soap. It's 99.1% pure, but it floats. And that way, depending on where they're, they're bathing or doing whatever, if they lose their soap, it floats and they can find it. So that's part of it. Um, I have on the table back there in the corner by the stairs, there are packing lists that tell you what is approved to send. There's a list that tells you things that you cannot send. Uh, I'll let you look at all that yourself. There are labels that go with your boxes and you will, um, there's a spot it'll say that you'll put your label on there. You'll mark what age group that you're buying for and whether you're buying for a boy or a girl. And then you'll just simply tape that there. If you have large rubber bands at home, put that around your box. Do not seal it with tape or anything like that because they will get inspected at the Operation Christmas Child Centers uh, just in case somebody puts something wrong in there. Um, I'm trying to think of the other thing. Oh, I also have their sheets back there that if your kids, your grandkids, or you want to fill out about yourselves and put in your boxes, you can. I've got postcards with envelopes that if you want to write a note to the, to the child or put scripture in there or whatever, feel free to take those and do that as well. There's some bookmarks out there that uh, have prayer needs on the back if you want to know how to pray for Operation Christmas Child. And so have them back by the 17th. If you've got any questions, feel free to holler at me and uh, I'll uh, answer your questions the best I can. And like I said, or check out the websites. 
Awesome, thank you. And uh, just want just so you know, you guys pack them. Our church covers the postage because it does cost postage to get it there. Uh, so our church will pay for that. Um, and but on the other side, Nick and I were talking about this. If you're a person, you're like, I don't have the means, or I can't, I, I don't want to pack a box. I just that's not my thing. And you want to just, but you still want to be a part of it. If you want to give specifically for postage, you're more than welcome to do that. But the church will cover the postage. You guys pack the box. I always say, if you got kids, let each kid fill a box if you're able to. That's always fun to teach them how to be generous, especially this time of year. So amazing. Thank you so much. Love you all. I think that's all we're going to cover today for announcements, but pay attention to Facebook and the slideshow and everything in case I missed something, but we'll see you all next week.